Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Amanda, otherwise known as the Tangled Skins Crafter. Um, today I thought I would do a little whip and chat with this cute little snowman stand up thingy. I have not diamond painted in weeks. Um, I had some videos already recorded and I've just edited those and uploaded those. But now I'm out of those too. <laughs> I don't know what's been up with me. I just haven't felt like doing anything. Um, I've been sitting on the couch watching Chinese dramas, Japanese dramas, K-dramas, and a couple American dramas, and uh, just cross-stitching mostly when I'm not reading or listening to audiobooks. Sorry if I sound a little out of breath. I've been moving around a lot. I just sat down. Um, yeah, I usually don't do whip and chat because I don't know what to talk about. But I thought I would do it anyway. Maybe talk about my school or just what I've been doing. I'm not, I have not been working for a few weeks now. I was looking for another job, something a little bit more, not permanent, a little, just something that will give me a, a few more hours but that won't interfere with my life too much because I'm also a full-time student. But it's it's like I'm, I'm too old for some jobs that I know I can do. I'm undereducated for some. I'm overeducated for others. It's very frustrating. I mean, when, you know, you apply for just a cashier position somewhere and they don't even call you, even though you had years of experience as a cashier, just why <laughs> so I'm getting ready to start a remote job hopefully that works out I don't want to give up that my other on-call job that I do at the NASA balloon facility but I might have to because my husband's not he's not getting the hours he used to I'm trying to figure out where I want to start I think I'll start up at the top on his hat um, he's not getting the hours that he used to. Sorry, I didn't even get the stuff ready. And he used to make a lot of overtime. So now his paychecks are like not even half of what they used to be. I'm trying to figure out which one I want to use also. Um, so yeah, I need to pick up some hours. I know this is going to be a little rambly some reason I can't think, talk, and do stuff at the same time. But the last, I don't know, several years, anytime I worked, whoops, I worked for myself basically. Not for myself, but I mean um, the money went to me to pay off my credit card debts because I have a little bit of a compulsive spending problem. Let's move that out of the way. But I spend probably about half as much as I pay off every month. So it's been taking a while to pay off my credit cards. These are the worst scissors ever. Maybe I can just put this back. little weighted thing. Alright. Um, the new job, which I'm confused on if I actually got or not, because I got an email saying that all my paperwork's done and we can proceed, and I got another email right before that saying that I didn't get stuff done in time, so the job offer was rescinded. So... I'm not sure, but I did get another email saying to start my classes for it because I have to do some classes, complete those before I do on job, on the job training. Um, it's for a telescribe position, which means I would just. I'm still not sure if it's like a Zoom or some other app, but I would be remoting in to a doctor's office and being that person who takes down the information 
all the notes, the one that pulls up any charts or anything that the doctor needs in order to treat his patient. Um, there's not, I don't interact with the patient directly. I cannot ask or suggest anything. All I can do is what the doctor tells me that's within my job duties. So if he asks me to do something I'm not supposed to do, then I have to say no. Which I don't know what a doctor would ask someone remotely to do, but you know. You know, I think it's interesting and one of the things I said in my odd video interview was that I think it could only help me in my my chosen field of study since I am studying psychology right now to learn you know more about at, at the very least learn the terminology that doctors use and just seeing how doctors interact with patients is probably useful um, I mean I, I have a lot of doctors myself a lot of specialists I have cardiologists and endocrinologists um, gastro, I can't remember what they're called, doctors, um, oncologists. Oh, I have several doctors other than my primary and they all treat people slightly different, but I know there is a commonality between all of them. But like I have one that's very cheerleader type very you can do it. I have one who's very blunt and kind of rude actually but I like the fact that he just says it how it is. I have one that's retiring so I don't know. I really liked her. She's my oncologist so I just saw her for the last time last week. I'm gonna miss her and I only saw her a few times because I only see my oncologist once a year. Um, I had cancer and I am now five years cancer free but that means I only have to see them at most once a year just to keep up with all the blood work and make sure everything looks good but my endocrinologist and my primary kind of do that too but yeah I hope she has a really good retirement um School's going well. Um, I don't really talk about it much, but I do the accelerated online class, whatever it's called. They call it something different with each school. But basically, I do two classes at a time, eight weeks for each class. So it's four classes per semester, but broken up two and two. And um, I think I could probably take a little bit more, but I did that... The last time I did online schooling and it is difficult to do more than 12 credit hours per semester especially if you're working or have any other things you have to do with your time um, I've been really lucky this semester well this this half of the semester I'm taking film editing and psychology and right now I have 100% in both classes. The first half of the semester was a little bit harder. I was taking speech and Spanish. And I was trying so hard to get a good grade in speech that I was letting my Spanish fall to the wayside because I've taken Spanish before, it's been years. I self-studied it a little bit a few years ago too, but I was still, I was knowledgeable about most, does that make sense, knowledgeable? I already knew a lot of what was being taught because it was just elementary Spanish one, so I wasn't focusing on it like I should have, and um, what really messed me up is I missed the deadline, so I got a zero on one or two assignments, and that dropped me down. I think I end up with a B in that class. It wasn't even a high B either. It was very disappointing. I actually did better in my speech class, which I struggled with so much. It's all online, so it's all it was all recording. 
That's how to record myself, which you think I'd be used to since I do do these videos, but if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you know I don't talk through most of them. I feel very awkward talking in my videos. Um, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with it, especially since I've been doing book talk also. But, I mean, I quit high school so I wouldn't have to do a speech class. And I managed to go to, I think, five different colleges and universities without having to take a speech class. So I was kind of sad that I had to take it. And it was so awkward for me. Because I didn't have to just speak in them. I had to record myself speaking in them. So it had to be me from the shoulders up or the chest up, whatever. Dressed appropriately with an appropriate background. Which was difficult to do because I was working so much at the time. But I passed it with, I think, a high B. Or a low A. I can't remember now. But like I said, I did better in that than I did in my Spanish class. Which was really sad. Um, but yes, these classes are going well. Um, like I said, I have 100% in both of them. It's slightly past the midterm. I just did week five. Just finished today, week five out of eight weeks. And I hope to keep the good grades. Um, the psychology class is just not what I thought it was going to be, I guess. I feel like I'm not really learning anything, but that could be partly because I have self-studied psychology before. I've taken some free online classes. It's been a few years, but so, man, I could not talk today. I'm sorry. So I'm going over a lot of stuff I've already went over, and a lot of it's been over the history of psychology and the fields, different fields of psychology and different research methods. It's just, there's no tests. It's all discussion posts and self-reflection journals and critical thinking essays. So I felt, I, I was like, do I, do I even have, am I keeping any of the things I'm learning? I don't retain stuff well sometimes. So I was like, am I even actually learning anything? Because a lot of the self-reflection and the critical thinking, I feel like I'm just rambling. Yeah, I keep getting good grades. So I'm like, they must be very lenient graders in this class. And then my film editing, which I was hoping it wouldn't be too difficult since I do edit, you know, my YouTube videos and well, I don't do anything extreme with them, you know, it does take some some time and practice to edit them. But my professor or my facilitator or whatever he's called has been very, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He's praised me a lot in my class, and that's made me very happy because I'm not used to having teachers that tell you, hey, you're doing a really good job. Hey, that was very excellent. And it just it makes me happy because I feel like maybe I do know what I'm doing with that. I was taking that class hoping it would help me with... Is this upside down or just malformed? I think it was upside down. I was hoping it'd help me with these YouTube videos to make them better quality, but I don't... I think the only thing I've really learned in that class is how to use a different editing software. It's really nice. But I might be learning more than I think. So, you know, I'm learning about like color, adjusting color, adjusting pace and stuff. But it's more for like actual films than for like the kind of videos I put out. But it's still interesting. And I had to take um, an elective. I cannot remember what this, I think this covers art, maybe. So, I'd taken screenwriting last semester. So, I just thought this would go well with that. And I've really enjoyed it. I'm getting ready to do a short film. I just finished a promo for a bakery. And, like I said, 100% on both of those. 
on, well, not on both of those, but on the, um, I'm sorry, I really can't talk and do this at the same time, apparently. Got 100% on my rough cut and my fine cut for the bakery, which I think I'm using my fine cut as my final cut because apparently I worked a week ahead. They have the, oh, I'm going to have to pause. Okay, so I'm back. Um, that was my daughter FaceTiming me. It has now been hours later. I cannot remember what I was talking about. I thought maybe it was something important. She just wanted to talk and watch some of the new K-pop videos we haven't watched together yet. We wait until we both have time before we watch any of the new ones by the groups that we follow. Yes, if you haven't known it yet, <laughs> if you hadn't figured it out yet, um, I'm a huge K-pop stan. Uh, mostly boy groups, some girl groups. Um, the girl groups I like, other than like Mamamoo and Twice and Blackpink. Other than them, it's usually uh, the latest gen. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then that's okay just k-pop things um so yeah no idea what to talk about and she made me watch a bunch of videos played a bunch of music for me and made me play some youtube games so now my brain is just exhausted plus i cooked dinner just made tacos tonight had a taco salad and then i watched an episode of the chinese drama that i'm watching right now I'm almost done with it. I binge them so much that they're over way too quick. I think I have four or five more episodes of the one I'm watching. I think it's called like Everybody Loves Me. I don't know. It's kind of hilarious. I love rom-coms. This is like a um, office romance with a little bit of, well, of course, some misunderstandings because it's how most of these romances go and a little bit of um the person not being who the other person thought they were which led to the misunderstanding the people have like a online gaming persona avatars um usernames you know gaming names gamer tags i don't know what the appropriate word is for it in the show and um, they know each other in real life too, but they don't realize it. So one has a crush on the other in game, like their personality. Another one has a crush on that person in real life, but they don't realize, you know, that they are the people that the other person likes. And it leads to a lot of misunderstandings and hilarity. The dramas I watch are what gives me my happiness. Whatever it is. Dopamine, serotonin, you know. The happy hormones. Because I do not think I make those on my own. What have y'all been up to? Have y'all been watching anything good? Have you been doing any fun diamond paintings or cross stitches or any other craft that you like? thinking about pulling out my latch hook kit one of them and doing some because I haven't worked on those in months since I don't even remember the last time I worked on one was it last year? have I even worked on it this year? I cannot remember this year is going by so fast already I cannot believe it's April my daughter has gotten to the age she is 20, going to be 21 this year. She's starting to realize how fast time goes by. You know, it's like the older you get, the faster it goes by. And she is starting to notice that. She is getting very close to finals for this semester, stressing her out. So we don't get a whole lot of time to like FaceTime and 
watch things together. We used to FaceTime and watch shows together. Watch an episode or two, or we'd watch some kind of... Sorry, I'm looking for my, my wax. I cannot find it. I'm running out of sticky. There's some. Um, whenever she has time and she's not home, you know, when she's at college, we usually FaceTime and watch whatever we're into at the time. Sometimes there's a, uh, like a survival show for a new K-pop group or there's several dramas we're watching right now. We love to watch Thai BLs together. But she just has not had the time. And there for a while when she did have time, I'd be at work when I was working at the balloon facility. Which I'm not working there probably until fall or winter again. They have some in summer. I think over Sweden is when, where they send up the research balloons in summer. In our summer, in U.S. summer. But um, they're very short term. So maybe like five days at a time. And I think the people who have seniority probably get that. And I need something a little more stable for now. I think I was talking about that earlier. So I probably won't be able to do those for a while unless somehow they can work around my new schedule. Anybody else just get frustrated with, like I applied, I applied a few remote jobs and then I applied for a local gas station and I was like, I, I know a lot of my experience was from a long time ago, but I was assistant manager and an acting manager at a gas station when I was younger and uh, you'd think that that would count for something and then just last summer I was working at a gas station as a cashier just you know until school got back in and everything me and my daughter both worked at one together I was the cashier she was like the um, stalker person because the gas station I worked at has separate positions for those I know a lot of gas stations you do both you stalk and you do the cashier but not this one which was really nice and it let us work together which was interesting if you can't tell me and my daughter are really close <laughs> she's like my little my little bestie my little mini me we talk very similar we think very similarly we react and act very similarly cracks my husband up and kind of frustrates him at the same time I feel like I probably said this before in some video or maybe book talk. I don't know. So I got wax on that one. Um, but yeah, working together was interesting. Because I got to watch her kind of... I don't want to say become her own person. But she couldn't rely upon me. Like the first few days, you know, she'd ask me, Am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to do that? But she had her own set schedule and her own set of tasks she had to do. And it wasn't, you know, stuff I knew about and hadn't done myself there. So she couldn't rely on me all the time. And I'm making her sound like she relies on me for everything. And she's not, but she was, she was a very, she kind of has like social anxiety, I guess. She was very uncomfortable speaking to people and that she doesn't know well and having to be around people she doesn't know so it was interesting watching her kind of learn and grow and just become her own like I said become her own person I mean grow into herself I don't know how to put it I think you understand what I mean <laughs> become less dependent on others and more dependent upon herself so more independent while doing that job and they want her to come back like on her vacations and stuff but she just has not had time and the one break she actually had where she she just kind of sat home and de-stressed the entire time she just her finals from her last classes 
We're so hard on her. Hope she didn't watch this. She didn't watch my videos, but I hope she didn't watch me like, Mom, why are you talking about me so much? Because she finds that embarrassing, too. Looks like I have a few more ones down on his ice skates that I'll do. I talk about my daughter a lot. I do have an older child also. Um, I'll just say my son. That's just easier. My son is eight years older than my daughter. They're my firstborn. Um, they live in New York State. So I haven't seen them in five years. Yeah. Because we just do not have the money to travel. And neither, they don't either. They are a... I don't know what their title is I think like home companion maybe they're not a nurse they don't do any health related stuff but they um, work with a disabled gentleman and drive him to appointments take him out in the community help you know help him socialize help him get around plus I think like does some chores around the house for him and like reads to him if he wants you know just he's a companion a help helper there's got to be a term for it I should have looked it up of course I wasn't really expecting to be talking about them but yeah they're I cannot believe they're going to be 29 this year I am getting so old. But yeah, those I have two. Those are my two children. My college student and my independent child. They've lived away from home. Um, my older my older child has lived away from home for nine years. They graduated high school, saved up a little bit of money, moved to Indiana, which is where I'm originally from. Lived with their grandparents while attending college. And then met, just, they weren't happy here and they weren't happy in Indiana. Then they met some people online, um, went to New York to meet up with the people and enjoyed their company. So ended up moving in with them. And then they've stuck with one of them and moves when he moves I don't know if they're in a relationship or just buddies but they help make sure that my older child has a place to stay and you know food to eat I've never met the person but I've seen pictures and they do fun stuff like they go to renaissance fairs and stuff together whoops that's probably more than I need anyway enough about my children um, I couldn't tell you a whole lot about my older child I mean anyway they're autistic high functioning Asperger's they um, like to game both console and tabletop I think they they do like role play and stuff they have I think a twitch stream and I think they might join people on YouTube I'm not sure I like um, they'll send me drawings of their characters and stuff. I find it fun. They make up their own characters. They've made up like an entire game. They went, what, they were wanting to go to school to be a game designer, but they couldn't afford the school they wanted and the school they went to did not have the classes they wanted. And then I don't know what happened. You know how sometimes you just 
get sidetracked on your goals. But I know that they had a whole story line and probably the whole story ready plus a lot of the characters for a game they wanted to create. And I don't know if they've done anything with that or if they've turned it all into like a role-playing tabletop kind of game. We don't talk as much as I'd like, so I don't know a lot about their life. I just know basically the general, how they're doing and what they're up to. They'll let me know if they have like a stream or anything so I can catch it. And then like I said, my daughter is in college. She's at a university down here in Texas. And she's stressed all the time, but yeah, I get to see her a lot. She comes home for breaks and then we go to concerts together and stuff. Mostly K-pop. This year has been more like rock and alternative and a little bit of punk. It's been fun. Mosh pits and crowd surfing. I don't do that. I'm too old and fragile. It's fun to watch everybody else. I got to meet um, a band that opened. We went to a water parks concert and one of their openers was this band called Pollyanna. And we got to meet them after the show. Pollyanna, um, Jill, the lead singer, actually took my B-reel for me, or with me. And that was fun. I really like their music. I told her they have a new fan. My daughter already liked them. And they did not play her favorite song, so she was a little disappointed. And she told, told Jill about it. We then told Jack, which I find it hilarious, there's a Jack and Jill. And, uh, and then she proceeded to tell everybody else in the band. Because apparently they were supposed to play that song. And then the band voted, I guess, and decided they wanted to play a different one. And leave that one out. And they had never played in Texas before, if I remember correctly, if I understood correctly. So, I don't know how many fans they actually had down here, so they probably just bugged the crap out of her that, you know, one of their actual fans didn't even get to hear the song they really wanted to hear, which they were supposed to perform. She made sure that they knew about it. It was funny. It was a really good concert, but that venue... The people there I understand they have to do their jobs and stuff but it was the rudest staff that I've ever met I don't know if it was the staff or the security which is still basically the staff but they were just so rude and pushy and they practically pushed my daughter just pushed her like physically pushed her and I was so irritated I'm gonna do eight next Use those horrible scissors. I cannot find. I do you ever go through phases of just losing stuff? Like I cannot find where I put anything lately. Anyway, back to the concert. <laughs> um, let's see if I can get this to. There we go. But water parks was amazing as usual. This is the second time we've seen them, or him. Is it a band or is it just him? No, it's a band, so them. Sorry, you can just listen to me ramble and try to get my brain straight, my thoughts straight. But um, I knew it would be a good experience because, like I said, we've seen them before. We saw them last year and then we just saw them last month. I don't even think it was a year in between the, the tours. I bet they were exhausted. And uh, they had two openers. This, this, I, they had two openers both time. Last time it was amazing, and this time, I mean, Pollyanna's great. And then there's a group called Loveless. I think it's what they're called, Loveless, that a lot of people seem to like and know. And I think I'd heard one of their songs. I think my daughter had played one of their songs for me before, or a couple, and I liked them. It's just, I really liked Pollyanna, and I love Water Park. 
I mean, it's actually my daughter's band that she, you know, not her band, but one of her favorites. And she got me into them. And you cannot list, I mean, I can't post any of the videos I took there, which you're not supposed to anyway, but it's just, I cannot post any full ones because there's too much of me and my daughter scream singing the lyrics and that's embarrassing. I did a, uh, a edit, I think of a bunch of my favorite moments. I think I uploaded it here. But it was a good concert. Um, who else are we seeing? We're seeing P1 Harmony later this year. We're seeing Cave Town. We saw Water Parks. I swear we saw someone else. But I cannot. I'd have to look on my phone and that takes too long. I think it's all of the eights. It's already getting really cute, isn't it? I love these quick little special shape, special drill pieces. I don't have many of them, but I need to start getting more because they're just fun to do and really cute. Let's see. I think I want to do... Let's do the gloves, number two. Did I already see that one? Yes, I did. I talk to myself. So I'm trying to remember to talk to y'all. I don't do whips and chats, so... It's awkward for me. But I talk to myself all the time. So maybe I should just talk to myself and let you listen. Mostly I just tell, remind myself of what I'm doing. I swear I have issues with my short-term memory. Um, I'm really looking forward to the P1 Harmony concert. If you don't know, it's a K-pop group. I thought I peeled that back. I guess it didn't hold it down. You're experiencing my confusion firsthand. Isn't it fun? Anyway, we saw them, was it last year? And now they are a group that I stand. It is one of my favorite groups. Up there under ATs and Zykers, who we have seen. And uh, there's not a whole lot of groups over them. And my bias which, if you don't know K-pop, you know, slang, that's, um, or terminology, that is basically my favorite member of the group, even though I actually have several. My bias decides to pay attention to my daughter during the concert, and she has a picture of him making a little heart with their hands, and I was right behind her, and jealous as I'll get out. Because that's my bias. Not hers. He's her bias now. After that, of course, she could not not bias him. And what's funny is, I think earlier, like just a few weeks earlier from that concert, we had seen One Us. And of course, my bias, I have couple favorites in that group too but one of my absolute favorites in that group paid attention to the woman sitting next to me and then my other one was sitting in the row they sat down in empty chairs in the row behind us like with almost within reaching distance it was like across the aisle and then one of the other favorites of both mine and my daughter gave her a high five i like, really, I'm not just the mom that drove the kid. She looks 12, I swear. They probably think she is the kid and I'm just the mom. But I want attention, too. It's a good jealousy, though. It's not a bitter jealousy. It's not a just a horrible jealousy. It's a happy jealousy, if that makes sense. I'm jealous of her, but I'm so happy for her. And I'm so glad I got videos of this. Because it just made her day. And that's why we go. Because I wouldn't go if it was just by myself. One, it's awkward me almost 50 years old and two I just it's something we like to do together but 
I mostly do it for her. And that is why I work to pay off my credit cards. <laughs> I told you this was, or I think I told you this was going to be rambly. I ramble. I go off on tangents. I have no idea what to talk about. I don't have anything planned out. This is just me talking. I hope it didn't bother you. I hope my webcam's not doing the weird thing where it focuses and unfocuses and focuses and unfocuses and moves. I cannot tell it while I'm recording. I only see it when I'm editing and I have no idea how to make it stop doing that. I don't know if there's a way to make it like fixed focus for when I'm not doing like unboxings or something. I got it from Tamu. Oh no, I got this from Amazon. But I don't remember reading anything in the little directions that it came with about the focus. And I can go into settings in my um, software I use to record, but it doesn't give me anything for focus. It gives me frame rate and stuff and color adjustment, which I fight with all the time. If you watch any of my videos, you'll know nothing ever looks true to color. And it drives me crazy. And if you watch my videos, you'll also know I say collar weird. Drives my daughter crazy. She says collar is the thing on the shirt. Or that the cats wear color is... I don't know how you say it. Pigment? Like color crayons. And I'm like, I'm sorry. This is how I say it. I should just take this whole covering off, but then I tend to stick my hand to it and get irritated with myself. I'm sorry if I do not enunciate well. I was trying to listen back to a little bit of the recording from earlier so I could see what I'd been talking about. And I get frustrated with myself because I can hear that I don't enunciate. And then it's hard to tell what I'm saying sometimes. I have no idea. I don't think I was always that way. I was told I actually had a good enunciation when I was like younger. So I think it's something to do with once I got my false teeth. Got my false teeth in my 20s. I think I was 29. Basically had to relearn how to talk. It's a very interesting experience if you haven't had a partial or a full plate or anything. I have both uppers and lowers, but it's interesting. It's like you, it is, it's like you have to relearn how to talk and how to form all your letters. I had to sit and just practice my ABCs over and over because there were certain letters like X's that I could not say at all. Like ox. I couldn't say ox. Um, so you might have seen my videos. In short, my video in short I put up yesterday. I think it was yesterday. By the time this uploads, probably day before yesterday. But um, I went for a little trek out in our local park. It's called the Davy Dogwood Park. And, I mean, I always miss it when the dogwoods bloom. I've never been out there when it they're all bloomed out. But, um, it's a very popular park, I guess. And it has a lot of hiking trails and a lot. It's not just a big open park, which I'm used to. And are like little parks in, the t in town. <clears throat> Excuse me, in town. It's a lot of forest, a lot of hills, a lot of trees, a lot of bugs, <laughs> so many bugs, and probably snakes. We have a lot of snakes out here in Texas, and all kind of things that are bad for your health if you're not careful. Mostly I saw bugs and squirrels. There were so many squirrels, and they were getting so irritated because they'd be, you know, running as I'm walking through areas hiding on the trees and chittering at me. But I don't... I used to go for walks all the time. Me and my daughter 
would walk three miles a day most days of the week just out where we live it's we live in a rural area and we'd like we like to go walking if nothing else we just walk around um, the area we live will it's not a housing development I don't know what you call it it's called state housing because um, we rent from the state we work at a prison well my, my husband does I used to and each unit each separate prison has like a housing area which has I call them quadplexes I don't know what you call them. they're not duplexes there's four units in a building and they're upstairs downstairs kind of like townhouses and then it's just four little roads making a box basically and then leading out to a road and there's like um, campers and trailers mobile homes on three of these and then the housing on one of them we live in the housing so me and my daughter if nothing else we just walk around that square on the property on the road usually late in the evening because it's just hot all the time down here if it's not cold or raining it's like no just comfortable temperature most of the time but once she went off to college we couldn't do that anymore and I just stopped walking so I'm trying to start up again but it's kind of depressing to do it by myself after you know being used to walking and talking with her every day so I'm trying to find different locations and I just throw on an audiobook and walk and as you saw in the videos if you watch those there's um, in the Davy Dogwood Park there are what they call fairy trails and it's just people came out and made their own little fairy gardens around like trunks of trees and and just places just random places and most of them are along these certain trails which I think some of the paths some of the trails weren't as developed as I call them stomp down as stomp down as they are now is clear because these fairy um, the fairy trails have been the fairy gardens I guess have been there for a few years now but I had never seen them I hadn't ever walked the trails and so I thought hey you know it's only maybe 15 minutes away from me or so I don't know where I live it's like 15 20 minutes to town 20 minutes it's everywhere at a minimum 20 minutes if you want to go anywhere really nice it's an hour hour and a half two hours I'm like two hours from Dallas and two and a half hours from Houston if y'all know where those places are another hour I think not another but we're about an hour from like Tyler I think it's one of the bigger places that's near to us that has like restaurants and malls and I mean the little town near us not little exactly but the small smallish town whereby it has a lot of restaurants and stuff but it's just nothing really fancy nothing really expensive and we don't have a mall we don't have most stores which we're getting more and more stuff we're getting an Aldi which is a grocery store and we're getting a Ross which is like a what would you call it, a discount clothing store so like name brands for less I think that's coming in the next year so our city is growing we have the tiniest library well not the tiniest the, where I used to live is a little place called Frankston Texas had um, a little used to be a train depot so a little tiny really cramped crowded like little two room library so that was the tiniest that I've seen other than you know the little free libraries as they call them 
And I know there's smaller out there. I've seen pictures online, but of the ones I've visited, Frankston, Texas has the smallest library that I've actually physically visited. Anyway, that was a tangent. So I decided to go to Davy Dogwood Park and walk the fairy trails. I don't think I have any more twos. And it was so pleasant. It was so nice. I really enjoyed it. I ended up spending an hour and a half. I took well over a hundred pictures because the edit I put up in my shorts through CapCut was like a hundred pictures and I still had more that I didn't, you know, didn't upload. And then I took a lot of videos, not as many videos as photos, but still quite a few. I put a bunch of those together in the one edit. I tried to get good videos of some of the more intricate and some of the more rustic fairy little fairy gardens and there's um, some like bittersweet ones you know like in memory of so and so memory of Nana this and Aunt that it was just nice seeing them and I gotta appreciate the work and thought that goes into them I know someone who did one, but I cannot for the life of me remember who it was. It was the daughter of someone, either the little sister of one of my daughter's ex-friends, or maybe the youngest daughter of an ex-co-worker of mine. I cannot remember. I remember talking to her about it, or talking to the mom about it, or somebody, but... I could not remember who it is, so I couldn't even try to decide to figure out who's, who did what, you know, if, which one was hers. Because they're not named or anything. Or there's no little sign saying who did them. But it was really cute, and there's like, I'm not even sure how many trails. There's two main trails that has the um, fairy gardens on it. One is paved, one is not, but it's still pretty well cleared and then after that I went down some of the other little trails and let me tell you some of it is so steep that you have to bend yourself almost in half well in like a L shape trying to get up these inclines and I thought I was gonna have to use hand holds but I managed and I don't, I, I don't think I went down all the trails I went down four or five, but it's really pretty. It's just, I worry so much about snakes because there's um, copperheads and, you know, all kind of rattlesnakes and stuff, but I think it's busy enough that most of them probably stay off the trails, at least the main trails, and there's people out running, there's people walking their dogs, you know, on leashes, there's kids on bikes. You can be on the trails on bikes but you have to always wear a helmet and then there's a lot of kids in the main park area the big cleared park area and on the um the paved roads it's a lot of cars too but the speed limit's like 10 miles per hour you have you you go slow enough that you have plenty of time to slow down if there's anybody on there and it's all one way so you know you don't there's not much crowding trying to describe it with it, but I'm not even talking about how pretty all the wildflowers are and all the different types of trees and it's just I try to put a couple pictures of flowers in I think the photo the photo edit and then I think I added some in the videos that I edited together just a bunch of different types I think the most hazardous part of the trails for me was the pine needles and the dead leaves on like the steeper areas because they got really slippery. I was just glad I actually wore regular like tennis shoes. I think they're running shoes. But I, whenever I'm not planning on a lot of walking, I just wear 
they slide on almost look like house slippers. They might be house slippers. I don't know. I got them from Tamu, and they're so comfortable. They're fuzzy inside, plastic outside, a little bit of tread on them. And I've actually walked three miles in those comfortably, but not up steep hills or anything. They would have slid off my feet. I would have had to went barefoot. Because some of the trails, they're so steep and not real difficult or anything, but um, I think if there wasn't a bunch of tree roots making these like stairways almost, that it'd be really difficult to get up and down them. Then there's these little like gullies. Um, I don't know what you call them, trenches almost, with bridges over them. I'm always worried that it's not going to hold my weight. I don't, I weigh 70 pounds less than I used to and I still think I'm like an elephant. But they're just like, they look like pallets laid over these chasms. <laughs> but they're well put together. They were, they didn't even shake as I walked across them. There was no give to them. They're well put together, so I'm not going to worry as much next time. I do plan to go back. Um, I went, I followed any little halfway clear trail, finding some of the little fairy gardens that were off the beaten path, so to speak. And, uh, but I bet there's still more to find out there. Plus, it's just, it's really nice. I just, I put on my audiobook and I just walked took a bottle of water with me. I think next time I'll eat first. Maybe an hour or so before I go. This, this time I had just, I had slept really late. Like, I don't even know, two in the afternoon or something. Got up, took a shower, took my morning medicine. Or, you know, wake up medicine. Medicine I have to take every day when I first wake up. And um, then I left. I didn't eat. I hadn't drank anything. So next time I want to make sure I'm hydrated before I go. You know, you drink the day before, so you're hydrated that day, because your body's, I mean, I'm no health expert, but I've studied enough and read, you know, read a lot whenever I was dieting and exercising a lot more intently. And uh, it says, everything that I found says that you need to drink the drink plenty of water all the time of course but um the water you drink today isn't really hydrating you if you're dehydrated it's kind of replacing what you're missing but it's the water you drank yesterday that determines if you're hydrated today i don't know if that makes sense and it's not you know entirely accurate i'm, I'm just from what i remember this is what i'd learned so yes, you need to drink water today, obviously, but you don't wake up totally hydrated if you didn't drink enough water the day before. And then if you go out and you sweat a bunch and you're not replacing what you're sweating out, then you're just staying dehydrated. And I think I was dehydrated when I left because I ended up getting quite a headache and it was only like 80 something out, like 82, 84 which for here is not, you know, hot. I know Fahrenheit for you that don't live around here. Um, I don't know what that is in Celsius. I can't do the math in my head. But, um, yeah, it's not very hot. And there was a constant breeze. It felt really good. But I got pretty hot. My face was really, really red. And I got a pretty good headache that lasted most of the rest of the day. So I think I got dehydrated. So I'm going to make sure to keep drinking plenty of water. I've been drinking about a half gallon a day the last week or two. So I'm surprised that I felt so dehydrated, actually. But I just cut pop out of my life. Soft drinks, um, soda pop, whatever you, you call them where you are. Carbonated beverages with caffeine and I drink, always drink the no sugar ones. So I've been replacing that with water, trying to get a little healthier. Because I know I've been pretty unhealthy. Especially since I stopped the Manjaro in like, what, the end of December? Is that when it was? January? I've been eating 
and drinking stuff that I hadn't been for a while, so look at me trying to put it over the plastic again. So lots of carbs, lots of junk food, lots of soda pop. So I'm trying to get back to mostly just watered water. I do a lot of flavored water. And I'm trying to cut out the soft drinks. I was drinking a lot of uh, Diet Mountain Dew there for a while. I had like this weird addiction going with Diet Mountain Dew and Cheetos. And I'm still craving Cheetos all the time. I know it's the carbs. I'm just craving carbs all the time. So I'm trying to ignore those cravings. Find something to replace it. Been eating fruit, but that's high in sugar. Plus, certain fruits really hurt my stomach. They make me bloat. I cannot remember what my gastro in I cannot remember the name of that doctor what they called it but there's certain fruits there's certain foods that my body does not react well to and grapes and watermelon I can't remember what else but grapes and watermelon are the worst and I've been eating grapes the last few days and I know better, but they're so good, especially the cotton candy grapes. But I'm trying to find something to replace the carbs, and I figure fruit. I think what I read, grapes, the grapes have pretty high carbs too per cup. If you have any suggestions on snack like low carb, low sugar, low sodium, treats some something that's not super expensive and that's healthy for you let me know because I struggle sometimes I was like what did I used to eat I used to diet all the time because if I don't diet constantly then I put on weight and that's what the Manjaro helped with I lost a lot of weight on it because it helped a lot with both the cravings and with uh, my insulin resistance and now that I don't, I'm not taking any medicine, my weight's coming back and all the exercise is not going to really help if I keep eating a lot of carbs because that's what my body is storing if I understand insulin resistance correctly. Instead of burning carbs as fuel, my body stores it as fat. For later on but I never actually burn it it's irritating anyway so yeah I, as you can tell I go on tangents that's why I don't get on here and talk so any suggestions for low carb low sugar treats would be appreciated but back to my trek through the forest and yes it is it's very heavily wooded, so I would call it a forest. I think it's all in my threes. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. Um, I listened to... Well, I didn't listen to the whole thing. I'm still listening to it, but um, I listened to part of Pretty girls make graves did you know that's a song title also I just found that out today by is it the stripes no the strokes I'd have to google it I'm sure if you're that interested you could google it faster than me since I'm recording but I listened to it I like that kind of music so it was fun discovering that I'm going to do number four next. But it is... I'm going to try to tell you about my audiobook without giving spoilers. It's a dark romance. I think it says dark academia on it. In like, you know, parentheses in the title. When you look it up. But basically this girl is from... California. I'm going to go and take the whole thing off and turn it. This, oops, 
see I'm already sticking to it. This girl's from California. Her name's George. It's like Georgina, I think. But everybody calls her George. Which does not go well for her in her new school. She's in a college. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Something Briar? Something Friar? Black Friar? Black Briar? I, I'm bad at this. I haven't listened to it since yesterday. It stays fresh in my head for like maybe 10 hours and then it goes away. But anyway. Um, she's there on a scholarship. It's full of, I guess, rich, entitled kids. I mean, they're not kids. They're young adults. 18 and above. And the drinking age there in England, in Britain, it's 18. So there's a lot of drinking and drunken shenanigans going on. But there's like a secret society in this school. And for whatever reason, some of them have it out for immediately. I would say this is a bully romance. Because there is a bully and there seems to be a little romance happening. I did not bring my drink in here. I'm going to pause for a second. I'm getting a little parched. <sighs> okay, I'm back. Um, I was looking it up. So it's called Pretty Girls Make Graves. I'm listening to the audiobook. It's by Stephanie Holmes. I'm about 65% through. It says, don't go outside on Devil's Night. I'm always the good girl. I never stand out. I follow the rules. At Blackfriars University, so it's Blackfriars, there's one whispered rule. Stay inside the night before Halloween. Hide under your blankets. Hope the Orpheus Society isn't the monster outside your window. If they get you, you won't just be humiliated. They'll put you six feet under. But I've screwed up. Anyway, I'm not going to read anymore in case, you know, you like to go in basically blind. Because I'm trying not to say too much that happens or that gives away much. But, um, I mentioned she is there on a scholarship. She won the scholarship through a podcast that she has done, like a, kind of like a true crime pro podcast. So, of course, she gets interested in the secret society and rumors of stuff that's happened there in years prior and you know, just starts digging around and upsetting people. In the meantime, <laughs> the first day she gets there, she happens across a naked, really buff priest that teaches there. And you can imagine that there is some awkwardness and he is apparently a very attractive, very muscular, very well proportioned, shall we say, man. So he has her interest from the first, even though he is a priest. So you can imagine there's probably a little bit of taboo romance. I don't even know. I haven't got to everything that's going to happen in this book, but we'll just say there is stuff happening that is not appropriate especially in her head like things that she thinks like I said I don't want to give away anything but we'll just say this is a very attractive man she finds him very attractive and she's around him a lot so she has lots of thoughts one of the secret society members is very attractive too I don't know what else to say. There is a little, I wouldn't say gore exactly. There's just stuff that might upset people if they read it. So definitely look for trigger warnings if you're going to read it. There's um, some SA 
there's some I would call degradation because these rich kids think they can do whatever they want to people that are what they consider lower than them lower class than them peasants and some of the stuff they do is absolutely horrible there's mysteries to be solved so that is a good part of the book I read some reviews and it, I feel like all the reviews I was seeing on good reads was either one star or five star there was like I know there's some in between but the you know the main ones that I was looking at was one extreme or the other some people absolutely hated this book some people absolutely loved it I'm still kind of undecided I don't hate it I'm enjoying it but I don't think it's going to be a five star read for me but it depends I still got 35% of the book left so it might surprise me and put it up there right now I'm leading towards three to four starred because I actually am enjoying it I'm enjoying the dark romance aspect but I'm enjoying the kind of mystery also I find the the whole secret society thing interesting some of the things that people have problem with in some of the one star reviews I read they don't bother me because I kind of feel like you got to suspend reality a little bit when you're reading I suspend belief I guess you should say um, I'd heard a comedian once years and years ago like decades ago call it Clark Kenting you can watch a Superman movie and buy that this man is not recognized even though the only difference is he's wearing glasses like when people he had his glasses on everybody would recognize him as Clark Kent out and about without his glasses he was Superman put on the glasses Clark Kent you didn't notice that it was Superman behind those glasses and they're like don't Clark Kent it don't over you know think it just suspend belief and enjoy the movie and that's what I do with books I even if stuff is very unrealistic in some books like people aren't going to pick up a foreign language in a week you know unless they're absolutely genius and even then I think some geniuses are going to have issues with learning a new language you know that kind of stuff nobody's going to become a math whiz if they struggled with math for 30 years and all of a sudden overnight gonna wake up and understand all of it but even in real life sometimes some weird things happen I've heard of people getting traumatic brain injuries and suddenly they can speak other languages or do complex math problems or forget how to do said math problems so I just think you should suspend it you know belief don't hate something just because it's not exactly realistic if you were wanting to you know get more realistic than maybe I don't know contemporary romance as long as they're not insta love maybe I should even call that small town romance I don't know what would be realistic for some people but each to their own I just find it easy usually and maybe it's because I like fantasy books I don't know but I usually find it easy to overlook stuff that maybe wouldn't be the most realistic thing my problem with books is when they jump from point A to point Y and skip over everything in between and then think Z is going to make sense no or if they I I read a book was it this year or last year that I think it just felt like and I won't say what book or anything but um I felt like the author had just had been writing and then like oh well this would be kind of cool and just would throw it in randomly oh then this person should actually be a mafia boss but nobody knew 
and while that can kind of make sense not if this person is also I don't know I'm not even going to go into that too much it's just whenever something doesn't make sense yes I can suspend belief a little bit and believe stuff suspend disbelief maybe that's the word I'm looking for I don't know something about what I'm saying doesn't feel right but I can believe the unbelievable as long as it kind of makes sense oh this person can suddenly speak this this forgotten language oh but they studied non-stop for the last like month well that kind of makes more sense than if oh they studied it an hour a, a week for the last three weeks now they're not going to be able to speak it or understand it or read it oh it makes sense what I'm saying because I really don't want to do all this talking just to like listen to it in edits and be like no no I'm just going to cover it all up with music anyway But as I was saying, so far, it's one of those books where I don't know who to trust. Like, this person seems like a bad person, but maybe they're secretly a good person. And this person seems amazing, but what if they're just acting that way to get close to this character and they're actually a horrible person? And that's how I've been throughout this book but it's holding my attention better than the other like what five books I have going I don't know what's wrong with me lately maybe I've been reading too much I've been reading what 15 books a month or some of them's been like manga I hope you couldn't hear my stomach just make the weirdest noise yeah, this is looking really cute so far, right? Have any of y'all done this one? Because I hadn't seen this this particular one on any channel yet, but I haven't... I've fallen so far behind that I've had to skip a bunch of videos that some of y'all put out. The ones of y'all that actually are content creators, I mean, you know, put out videos. I, mean, I know some that watch this do not. But I've missed so much. So I don't know. So there could be like five of you that I watch regularly that have done this and I just missed it. I'm trying to figure out if that's... There's just an extra one. I thought maybe it was just upside down, but nope. You know, I have five, six, seven, and nine left to do. Let's do five. I hope I'm not boring you with my rambles. This is this is how I talk. Drives my husband crazy at times because sometimes I'll start out talking about one thing, get on like 20 different tangents and never get to the point of what I was I had started talking about. Whatever I you know what I'm saying, the end of end of what I was trying to say in the first place. Ooh, I like this color. You know me. You know my favorite color is purple. You know lately I've been really attracted to certain blues. And um, like aqua marines and teals. Blues and green blues and gray blues. I blame my daughter. I think her favorite color is gray blue. And she... I'm easily influenced. Sometimes I think I don't have my own taste in anything. Well, not, I wouldn't say anything, but like music, I'm easily influenced by other people. Books. Book talk has greatly influenced me. I used to read some really messed up stuff when I was younger. And then I went through a phase of... I think I grew up mostly reading fantasy and westerns. Westerns because my school principal would actually bring me big bags of books to read. Because I read everything in the library. 
and uh, he read a lot of westerns. Fantasy, because who doesn't love fantasy? I know there's a lot of people that don't, but it's just that's what I grew up loving. Fantasy and horror. I grew up from a very young age reading Stephen King, Dean Koontz, John Saul. As I got a little bit older, Bentley Little. Um, I can't even think of people. Those were the main people. I, I had almost every book Stephen King had written at a certain, you know, by a certain age. He wrote a lot more after that. I had a lot of John Saul and Dean, Coon book, Dean Koontz books. My room was probably 8 by, I want to say 6 by 8, but probably more like 8 by 10 feet. And I didn't have a whole lot of spots for bookshelves. So I had all my cabinets. Because I had, I think, six cabinets above, like, my dresser. And I had that those full of books. Like, I mean, stack from the bottom all the way to the top. And then from the very back all the way to the front. Full of books. I had to pull out rows and rows of books just to get to the ones in the back. And then I had, there was a shelf in the top of my closet which ran the longer length of my room and I had that shelf full and then I had a bookcase in my closet and I had a bookcase beside my bed and those were all full two or three you know rows of books and then I had an outside shed <laughs> where I had big containers of books I mean I had a lot of books as a kid and a teen. That's what I did all the time. It's all I did was read. My grandmother taught me when I was four. I think I was four. I know I wasn't, wasn't in kindergarten yet when she taught me to read. I don't remember anything before the first day of kindergarten. So I don't remember her teaching me to read. I only know that she told me the reason she taught me to read was because I always wanted her to make up stories. And then I wanted her to repeat those same stories and she wouldn't be able to remember them and I'd get upset. So she decided it'd be easier just to teach me to read and get me books. So that's what she did. And then I remember that came up because in kindergarten, the teacher did not believe that I could read. She thought I had everything memorized and was just saying it from mem memorization. Like... Jack and Jill and Humpty Dumpty and all that stuff and my grandmother came up talked to the principal and they got a book out and had me prove that I could read and I could I know in third grade I was supposed to skip grades and I didn't want to I chose to stay in third grade with my friends so I guess I was supposed to skip from second to fourth or maybe I was in third grade and I was supposed to skip from third to fifth either way I was supposed to skip a year and I chose not to but I tested reading on a high school level in third grade and doing math on an eighth grade level I don't think my math ever got past that eighth grade level <laughs> I just, I love to read. I don't even remember how I got on this tangent. Remember me talking about me rambling and tangents and never getting to the point? Yeah. Sometimes I can trace my conversation back. But with me doing this and talking, it's, my brain's just like, no. I know I was talking about horror books. I was talking about this audio book. Anyway, Dark Romances. I think that's where I was, where I started. I used to read some really messed up stuff as a kid. I mean, really dark, sexual, almost pornographic at times, but in weird, deviant, deviant ways. 
and uh, I just a lot of horror books had some really messed up stuff in there. It was like body horror and I read a lot of monster horror creature features but back then they didn't have trigger warnings and there'd be a lot of violence and mutilation and degradation and weird sexual stuff and I didn't even blink an eye at this stuff I always tell people I understand why I'm such a weird person now looking back on what I read when I was a child and watched I used to love watching any horror movie that I could get. Most of them were on TV, but sometimes my cousins would rent some and I'd get to watch them even though you're supposed to be 13 and older, 18 and older, you know. And I was like 8. So I don't know. I, I, that's my long way of getting to dark romances. I, I've stepped away from a lot of stuff. And nothing was called dark romance back then. I don't know if that was... It wasn't a genre, I guess. So when I very first got on Book Talk, a lot of people were talking about this stuff. So I was like, you know, maybe I'll give it a try. And the first one I read I really liked. The Master of Salt and Bones. But it was very tame to the stuff I'd read when I was younger. And then I've read some more since then, and I found out there's certain things I just, I don't like. I mean, I'll read them, and I'll enjoy the books, but like, if someone said some of the stuff to me in real life that the people say in these books, I would either laugh or punch them in the face. I do not like to be condescendent, condes I can't talk. I don't like to be talked down to. I don't like to feel less than other people. So that's one of the things I see a lot in these books. I also don't like to be told what to do all the time. I was married to a person like that. It was a horrible, horrible experience. I'm very open about it. It was a very abusive relationship mentally and physically. And it's kind of a trigger for me, some of the stuff that happens in some of these books. But I still read it because sometimes I just really like the book. doesn't matter what happened to me in my past because it's not happen happening to me in the present. So I can read about it, if that makes sense. I know I uploaded something before talking about that, about trigger warnings about how people handle them because I know some people just cannot cannot read stuff that even hints at some of this stuff and other people just breeze right through it and some of it does affect me but I'm not gonna not read a book that I really want to read because it might give me nightmares for a while or make me depressed for a while because then I might miss out on some really good books Anyway, dark romance. I just find it a, an odd genre because it's so intriguing and so... I'll just use the word hot. It's just so hot sometimes in the book. But if it happened in real life, some of the stuff, the stalkerish stuff, the dominating stuff, the... What's the word? The very the possessive jealousy. If that happened in real life, people would probably run the other way from the guys. But it's so hot in a book. It's so weird. Why do our brains do that? Who knows? He's getting there. I have two more numbers. No, three more. Six, seven, and nine. What do you think? Is he cute? I do so many of the full coverage pieces that I find it weird sometimes to have, especially like this one, have so much open space that I'm not working on, but it's very pretty. I like this kind of old timey look. 
makes me think of decorations that my school would put out whenever I was a kid. Now, I was born in the 70s, so 80s, but it was probably more like 50s, 60s, 70s artwork, maybe even older, but just old time, old timey, yeah, filling images. They make me happy. I'm going to do number seven next. So, any of you that craft, do you listen to audiobooks? Because, I mean, that's how I consume a lot, a lot of my books. I've been reading more lately, but that's been taking away also from my crafting time. But I've been reading more physical books and ebooks. But I still listen to audiobooks pretty much every single day. There's some days that, you know, I've woke up, turned on an audiobook, and listened to it, and maybe another one, depending on how long it is. Maybe several, if i am got the short ones, like novellas. But I'll just listen to them all day. Taking very few breaks, and then, you know, fall asleep listening to one. I just, I enjoy audiobooks. And it's funny because when I first started listening to them years ago, I didn't think I was really going to like them. And I cannot remember exactly how I got into them. I think I had been wanting, there's probably an Anita Blake book, Laurel K. Hamilton's Anita Blake series. Honestly, I know I, those were some of the first audiobooks I got. Hope that wasn't loud. If so, I'll try to edit it out. Had to take a drink. But, um, I think I'd been wanting one of her new ones and I couldn't find it at my library, but an audiobook of it was available or something. Or maybe not one of her new ones, but like one I hadn't read yet. And I end up enjoying it. And there was a few books that I listened to back then that I was like, mmm. I don't like it. Um, I started because you know I've been I was kind of quite poor at the time like getting our food from the local church kind of poor like that's how we ate and fed the kids so when we first moved to Texas I think that's when I first started listening to audiobooks but um, I'd have to look online for places you could listen to them free and it was like a uh is it called LibroVox? it's where just regular people narrate you know read the books and record it and I know I probably wouldn't sound great recording an audiobook especially since I don't enunciate well and that's what you know I was listening to there at first and it was just people that didn't know, like, pacing, didn't enunciate well, didn't have good recording equipment, lots of breathing in the mic, a lot of hard P's and T's when they spoke, some with the really wet mouth sound, which I probably have. I'm talking right into my microphone. Um, you know, just the stuff that bothers a lot of people. It didn't bother everybody, but I mean, it bothers a lot of people and it really bothered me. So I wasn't listening to a lot, but once I discovered professional audiobooks through the library and stuff, then I started really liking them. And then I started finding narrators who did like different voices and different accents and that just kind of enhanced it for me. And then I, I tried some, um, what are they called? You know, the dual narration ones. And the way they were done back, you know, what, 10 years ago when I first started listening to it, some of them, I just did not like them. I really enjoy them now. Have you listened to Butcher and Blackbird? I'm trying to think of some others. There's been a lot that I've listened to lately that have had either the dual narration or 
sometimes the full cast dramas. I like those too. But I feel, you know, a lot of people, they just don't like being read to or whatever. Maybe it's because I had such a love of it when I was a kid and I loved reading to my kids. But I enjoy an audiobook. And then to get to good narrators that know, you know, they, they do really good narration. They emote really well. They do the voices. They do the accents. They do something, you know, really well. That It just makes me happy and it makes me feel more immersed in the story. Anyway, it's just, I love audiobooks, and that's, I think it's why I was asking, do any of you listen to audiobooks? And if so, have you listened to any recently that you really enjoyed? Do you have any recommendations? I recently finished Bra Brandon Sanderson's um, The Way of Kings. It was my first Brandon Sanderson book. I don't know how I haven't read any of his books until now. I might come across one at some point be like oh I have read this like a different series of his or something but so far I haven't found any that I have but I really enjoyed it it was like I don't know 40 something hours long I think I listened on 1.2 I don't speed them up much because I like how just normal speaking sounds sometimes rushing it too much it sounds weird and I don't read along I know a lot of people a lot of booktubers and book talkers read along with their audiobooks. I don't. I'm usually listening to them while I'm crafting, knitting, cross stitching, diamond painting, um, latch hooking, drawing. I used to listen to them while I studied because my brain apparently likes a bunch of stuff at once, which if you study it, it your brain usually cannot actually multitask. So while you're doing two things at once, your brain's actually focused on one. So you're only partially paying attention to the other task you're doing. I found that interesting. I think I learned that in one of my psychology classes or maybe one of the free classes I've taken online. I think the wax I have is old and I can't find any of my new ones. I'm not going to dig through my stuff yet. I have a whole drawer of them. It's just, I don't feel like getting it out. I should have done that when I was paused a while ago. But I'm having trouble picking. It's it's running out quickly. Um, but yeah. Audiobooks. Sorry. Tangents and distractions made me lose my train of thought. Oh, The Way of Kings. It was just... I really enjoyed it. I gave it five star, and I'm I'm understanding why people love this writer so much. This author, Brandon Sanderson. I hope I'm saying his name right. I'm really bad with names. But he did. He made. He created such a complex world. It's like there was so much going on that I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it at first because it's just so much going on. And some, I've, I recently rated a book pretty low, I think like a three star, because of the same thing. There was a lot going on, and I found it interesting how everything came together, but it was like I couldn't remember who was who, and who done what, and what the point of anything was. But Brandon Sanderson, he doesn't, that, that's not how his book is. Like, there's a lot going on. There's so many characters. There's so many different elements to the story. And there's a lot of politics. And there's real like world building. And you know how a good fantasy, high fantasy novel is, right? It's like everything's different. It's not, I mean, yeah, they're human or whatever. Often. Not every book's, you know, but mostly it's based on stuff we can understand that we can picture we can visualize but then the world itself is very different there's magic or there's well I'll just talk about you know his book um there are little beings that don't really interact with people I don't know if they're sentient exactly but they spring up 
for various things. There's ones that come up for if you're in pain. There's one that's come up if there's rot. There's stuff that comes up if you've done something, you know, and deserve some glory for it. There's stuff that comes up for, I think, anger and drunkenness and things that come up only when it's raining or that love wind. And one of the main characters is one of those that is sentient. I, mean, I don't know if you could say main character, main secondary character. <laughs> one of the most prominent of a side character. I don't know. This is, I don't know how many books is in this series, but she's pretty important in this first book. There's a slave that used to be like a, I almost said war hero, but he wasn't a hero. He was a soldier. He was a um, rank in some mil in military and he got betrayed. There are all these princes. There's like nine princes and a king or eight princes and a king or something. And you find out about a couple of them, a couple of the people and the king. Um, there's a special scholar who's also like a princess. There is a thief who's really intelligent. There's some magic that can be done using certain tools, but only certain people can use them. And you find out a lot about that. Um, they have a belief system, gods, and I think the race of people that most of the story about believe that war and fighting and stuff like that is like the most important thing. And then after you die, you go to, I guess, like a... A huge battleground. Is it Valhalla it's making me think of? I just talked about this to a friend recently. Anyway, so there's like a big battle after you die. So you have to be a good soldier. A couple of these don't have the right collar. So I'm switching them out in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Oops, upside down. I don't know. There's just like, it's a, it's a whole world. He, you know, he built this unique multi-faceted, multi-layered world with magic systems and different castes depending on race and um, beings. Like even the land is different. The grass is different. Everything. Storms are different. The seasons. The seasons last like days instead of months. It's just really, really interesting and intricate. And he does it in such a way that you understand it, you follow along with it, you don't get really lost and confused. And then he does that while creating these characters that you really come to care about and understand. And you can you can understand their, their reasoning and, and their actions and it's just really, just really good. I gave it five stars and I just got, um, Audible has like a three months for 99 cents. A month or something like that deal going on right now so I used the credit I got whenever I signed up for that because I haven't had audible for a few months so I thought hey get it again while there's this special and I used that credit for this month for the second in that series so I'm going to start listening to that soon I can't wait to hear more because it just it ended I mean where it ended, I probably could be okay with not continuing. Like, there's a lot of things happening, a lot of an unanswered questions, but, you know, I could, I could be reasonably okay not reading the next one. Like, I would still have a lot of questions, but I wouldn't feel like I was left on a cliffhanger exactly. But I don't want to not read the next one. I mean, I, I loved that book, and I'm looking forward to starting the second one in the series. I can't remember what it's called. I just noticed The Way of Kings was the first one. And that might be the... I can look real quick. I keep saying I'm not going to look up stuff while I'm sitting here recording, but... My 
because I just finished. I've read 51 books so far this year. I'm too behind schedule. Because I did that thing where you let um, the little spinner thing on Book Talk. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, it shows how many books I would read. It's the Stormlight Archive. The Way of Kings, Brandon Sanderson, the Stormlight Archive. So I'm going to read the second one of that soon, or listen to. But yeah, the little spinner picked my um, book goals for the year, and it said I was going to read 200 books, and I was like, I don't know. I read like 150 last year, or slightly under, is that, or was it 116 last year? I just had that open, I could have looked. Anyway, so yeah, I think I read 116 and had just wanted to do 120, but I wasn't reading as much last year there for a while, so I could have probably did it probably closer to 130 at the rate I'd been reading toward the end of the year. But this year, I decide I'm going to go for 200. So I'm reading a lot of stuff I'm seeing on Book Talk, and then I'm also doing some like manga that I've been wanting to read and haven't yet. Um, I'm looking for some graphic novels. I use Everend. I have a subscription to that. I think I pay yearly or something. And uh, I get a lot of stuff that I read ebook wise through that. Um, I've won a lot of, not a lot, I've won some giveaways and I've had a couple people book ferry me, which was surprising and lovely. Of course, the book fairies, I think both the book fairies I got were books I've already read in ebook form, and I just really am happy to have them for myself because I'm understanding now why people call it their trophy shelf because I like the book so much that I want to be able to see them and pick them up and hold them and smell them because I love the smell of books, and I'll probably read them all again someday. I wonder why I have so many that don't have the, the gold on it. Where was I going with that? Anyway, so I'm too behind schedule. I'm going to try to read 200. I really don't know if it's feasible. I mean, it is if I keep doing novellas and manga and graphic novels. And I love those, but I like... I like stuff with more meat to it, you know what I mean? I like, I like novels. I like, I like something that's like three, four, five hundred pages. Or like my Anita Blake series, 30 books in the series so far. I like to have a lot of content about the same characters. Which I know some of these manga have quite a few books in, in the series. So, and I'm like, Tokyo Ghoul, I, I'm thinking about reading. I only own, I think, the first or maybe the first two books in that one. But I'm going to look and see if I can get them either in one of my subscription apps or read them online. Because I know there's a lot of places you can read manga or see if a library has them. My, I know my local library doesn't. But um, I also have a library card to one of the bigger cities around me. And you can, I can borrow from there. So I might look. Because they will send it to my library. And then I can pick it up there. We'll see. But yeah. If you have made it this far. And you read manga. Give me some recommendations. Because I'm not. I've always enjoyed it. But I've been very limited on my exposure to it because most of the people I know don't read it. And my, like I said, my local library in the last two places I've lived, at least, have not really had any. Or they've had a very small selection. I read what they had when they had it in, you know, in order starting with like the first book. Sometimes I'll go places and they'll have like the third, the fifth, and the eighth, but they don't have the other ones. So that makes it difficult. Anyway, manga, graphic novels. I would love if there are any young adult and adult graphic novels 
that you could recommend. Another thing I don't have a lot of experience with is graphic novels, but I enjoy them. Let's see. Ebooks, I've been reading a lot more lately. Oh, I was talking about the, the physical books. That's why I got started on um, book fairies and stuff. And I have some physical books I'm going to read. I have several arcs that have been sent to me. Um, a couple of them I have to read for this month. Some of them I've already read. And then I have a lot of ebooks and ebook arcs. I get um, advanced listener copies and ARCs through a couple different sites and then authors will send me some stuff too. I always feel bad when I don't give good reviews whenever an author's taking their time to send me this this work they've done. You know, this they put their blood, sweat, and tears in these and then if I don't like it I feel guilty but I'm, I always give an honest review. If I, there's something that I didn't like about it, I will I'll state it in the review. Um, some of them, you know, they'll send it and be like, please don't post a bad review for however long until after it's released. And sometimes it's, I just forget to go in there. I'll leave a star rating, but I won't leave the review. Because sometimes I've read another 20 books since then and have totally forgotten what I didn't like about it. And I hate or I shouldn't say hate, but I really just like doing like verbal <laughs> reviews on stuff I don't like because it makes me feel so bad. I feel like I'm just bad mouthing someone. My it's like it's like telling someone their baby's ugly, telling them telling someone you know saying that their book was horrible. And I have I've read some horrible arcs over the years, like you know a ten year old writing a Wattpad story could write better than some of these adult people writing their books and it makes me feel so bad. Which I would never say it that way about anything specific, but you know, grammar, punctuation, um, dangling participles. I, I mentioned that to someone and I don't think she was very happy about that. There's certain things that just bother me and it, it detracts from the story for me. If I cannot read something smoothly, if it doesn't sm just flow like it should, then it makes it really difficult for me to read it and enjoy it. And that will drop my rating. If you are a native English speaker, but you cannot write English well, I can't speak it well. I don't know why. It's just, it, it, it makes me wonder why you're writing a book. Why you're not having someone help you write the book. Maybe that's, that's what I'm saying. Because write it. But maybe have someone help you with the grammar and sentence structure. And please, have someone edit it. Because I feel like you cannot fully edit your own work because you're not going to see some of the mistakes you made because sometimes you won't know that they are mistakes. Does that make sense? I hope I'm not being too harsh because I honestly appreciate everybody's hard work. I do not have a published book out there. I've written a book or two but I've never had the guts to try to publish it. So, trust me, I do appreciate the effort that goes into books. And yeah, there's probably people out there that just write them like nothing. Like, it's easy as breathing to them, you know. But that's not the majority of people. That's not even, that's, that's like the exception. That's why I feel bad if I have anything critical to say. And why I, you know, I, I joke about a little bit about people not Englishing well when that's their native language, but I appreciate the effort that goes into it. Sorry, I'm getting on a tangent and getting distracted. 
I'm almost done. So, I hope this hasn't been too horrible. Why can I not put these in their spot? Oh, goodness. I think it's because I'm looking at it from an angle. I'm trying not to hit the camera with my head. And I'm trying to get them to point in the right direction. Round ones are easier. They don't have a correct direction. There we go. Um, but I hope this hasn't been too boring or you don't think I'm like some rude person. I hope you found at least part of it entertaining. At the very least, watching me do this. Hopefully, if you didn't like me talking, you just muted me and threw in an audiobook or some music or something. I cannot get these to flip over easily. Um, I want to thank you, because I know this is a pretty long video. So I want to thank you if you've made it this far. Even if you just skip through, thank you so much for watching, for checking out my channel, for checking out my video, and my, my little project here. I really enjoyed doing this one. I enjoyed rambling on to y'all. I wish I knew what to talk about, and then I probably wouldn't be quite as rambly. I think I got everything. Tell me if you do these, do you seal them? Do you put like a sealant on them? I have a sealant, but I kind of feel like it makes them kind of dull. I didn't think it did at first on one of them I did, so it might just be I put it on too thick on the last thing I put it on. Because I'm afraid these are going to fall off. They don't feel like they're stuck very well like this one moves really easy so I have the sealant the sealer so I'm wondering if I should use this anyway as I was saying thank you for joining me today thank you for watching all the way through or skipping through or whatever The whole thing in there. Okay. I think it's really cute. I cannot remember where I got this from. If I got this through Timu, I will put the link in the description. I'm sure I'll find it. I think I got this through Th Timu. This one, actually, I think this might have been one of my free gifts, so I might not. I'm not sure if I can find the, the link or the price, but I will look. And if I can find it, I'll put it in the description box. Um, if you haven't played the Timu games, that's how I've been getting some of the free stuff lately. Um, nothing like expensive for the most part for the little free ones they send me um, some of the games if you play like daily for months you can get some bigger pricier items but I think this one was just one of the random ones they sent me for free so if you like just monotonous tap 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 games that you have to share with everybody you know and they, they have to click the link then um check out the timu games <laughs> all right i will stop rambling it is 3 30 in the morning so i'm going to try to edit this and get this uploaded i guess i could have showed you it in the stand i swear i should have blooper reels especially since i can't even get it into the stand their special way it goes in. Anyway, it just sits in there. Alright. I'll probably edit this in. And um, I thank you so much. Um, please like, share it if you think anybody would be interested. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you for subscribing if you're new because I have a lot of new subscribers lately. I'm not sure where y'all are coming from, but I appreciate, appreciate you so much, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.